Hi. Um, my name is Dr. Todd Rowe, and I'm here today to answer the question, what is a homeopathic proving? I am the uh, proving research director at the American Medical College of Homeopathy and have been conducting provings since 1993. Uh, altogether, we've conducted about 20 homeopathic provings over the years. So what are provings? Provings are the ways that homeopaths do and conduct research. They are the primary tool that we use to conduct homeopathic research. Provings are methods to develop new homeopathic medicines and also to increase our understanding of the healing potential of existing homeopathic medicines that we already have. Now there are different kinds of research. There is quantitative and qualitative research and provings represent a form of qualitative research. Why do we do provings? In, in natural medicine, there is a law called the law of nature cure. And this law states that life provides a healing medicine found in nature for every disease found in man. And if that's true, then it's our job and responsibility to go out into life and to seek out um, forms of um, life that have medicinal qualities, that can heal sicknesses found in man. And this is what homeopaths have been doing for over 200 years in conducting homeopathic provings. In addition to um, going out into life, there is a corollary to this principle, um, which relates to this idea of macrobiotics. And that is, in nutrition, macrobiotic theory states that the best foods for you are ones that come from your own backyard. And in natural medicine, there is a corollary that substances that are most beneficial for us oftentimes are found in our own backyard. And so we've been interested here at our college, uh, because we are located in the Sonora Desert, of studying substances that have healing potential um, that come from local desert. Now the first proving was done by Dr. Samuel Hahnemann and it was done around 1800 or so. Dr. Samuel Hahnemann is the founder of homeopathy and he was a German doctor and chemist. He was a brilliant man and he had become somewhat disillusioned with medicine of his day and how it was practiced. So in 1790 he was translating a treatise on Materia Medica by Dr. William Cullen who said that quinine cures malaria because of its astringent or bitter properties. He didn't buy this and decided to investigate further and did a research experiment where he began to take quinine himself and he began to record all of the symptoms that he began to develop and these symptoms were consistent with malaria. This, by the way, is a picture of Dr. Samuel Hahnemann in his later life. And there's also a monument dedicated to Dr. Samuel Hahnemann in Washington, D.C. And this is a picture of the monument. It is the only monument uh, dedicated to a doctor in Washington, D.C. So based on that experiment and lots of other similar experiments, Hahnemann began to develop, redevelop, the law of similars. And the law of similars states that when a healthy person is given a medicine that causes a certain set of symptoms, then that same set of symptoms in someone who is sick, when the medicine is given, can act in a curative kind of way. So Hahnemann did 100 provings by the time he died. 
and would sit in his office waiting for someone to come in with those same set of symptoms that he saw during the provings. He would give the medicine and it would act in a curative kind of way. Another way of restating that is that any medicine which is capable of producing symptoms in a healthy person will remove the same symptoms as an expression of a disease. In homeopathy, we discovered that each person is unique, an integrated symptom picture um, of their illness, and that each medicine is also unique and has an integrated symptom picture. And that true healing occurs when we bring these two together, the symptom picture that matches the symptom picture in the patient. And this is the law of similars or nature's law of cure. As I mentioned, by the time Hahnemann died, he had identified a hundred different homeopathic medicines. Today, we have about 5,000 different homeopathic medicines. Um, and here at the college, we do approximately four homeopathic provings every year. A little bit about our provings at the college. Uh, we do have an institutional review board that oversees our research. Um, and uh, they make sure that the research meets minimum ethical standards. Our research is also consistent with national standards for proving research, international standards, and federal government standards through the Homeopathic Pharmacopeia of the United States. Our research trials in doing provings are double blind, and that is subjects do not know what the substance they are getting is until at the end of the study. And they also are placebo controlled. And that is a certain number of subjects receive placebo rather than actual remedy. Typically we have 25 subjects for each proving and uh, five subjects of the 25 do receive placebo. Our studies are 90-day trials, and during those trials, the uh, research participant, or prover as we call them, is asked to keep a daily journal of symptoms um, that may occur after starting to take the remedy. Um, and this uh, journal is shared with their supervisor, who meets with them on a regular basis, and helps them reconstruct symptoms that they may have had during the day. And those symptoms can be physical, emotional, men and mental. The supervisor also keeps a journal as well. Most subjects or provers that participate in the studies uh, typically experience symptoms in the first few weeks, which taper off and are largely gone at uh, one month. Um, the phases of the proving are we first establish eligibility and typically um, subjects that uh, participate in our provings are between 18 to 65 years old. They're not pregnant. Um, they are not um, uh, breastfeeding. Um, and they are in a relatively good state of health. They don't have serious medical conditions and are not taking a lot of conventional drugs that may interfere with the process of the proving. Um, there is an initial meeting um, once el eligibility is determined with uh, the proving director, which is typically myself, where we talk about the study, what's going to happen, what to expect, and informed consent is obtained. And then the prover meets with the supervisor where their initial case is taken to provide baseline symptoms that everyone has. There is a run-in uh, period of seven days where the prover begins to record in their journal the symptoms ex that they usually experience. And then they actually start taking the medicine during the intervention period. And the dosing typically is at bedtime a single dose, and you take this for one to seven doses. Once an individual begins to experience any symptoms related to the proving, they are instructed to stop taking the medicine any further and simply to record 
any symptoms that linger after that time. Typically, provers will follow up in one month um, with the proving director, which is an exit meeting where they talk about their experience during the proving. And then if any uh, approvers have any lingering symptoms or if they have cured symptoms, they are followed for up to two additional months. And cured symptoms are symptoms that someone had before they started the proving that get better with the proving. And in every proving that we've done, we typically have uh, one or two provers that experience chronic improved symptoms as a result of the proving. At the very end, we have a debriefing meeting where the provers are told what the substance was, whether they received placebo or active remedy, and, uh, and more information about the substance to determine how the substance may be used uh, in health and healing in the future. Typically, in approving, we use a 30x or a 30c potency. This is chosen because this is an ideal potency to produce some mild symptoms without them from being too severe that it causes the approvers to uh, suffer unduly um, or to have any restriction in functioning in their daily lives. Approvers are typically reimbursed for participation in provings. Um, this varies depending on the proving, but average is about $125 um, to participate. After the proving is done, it's um, my job as proving director to create a picture of the remedy. Um, usually this is a listing of symptoms that are put together and a repertorization where um, it describes all the various symptoms that are associated with um, the various provers in the proving. Characteristic symptoms are uh, described, and that is symptoms that are strongest for the remedy, um, that really stand out from the proving. And then themes are described in which um, the overlying themes of the remedy uh, that came up during the proving um, are put together. And then the remedy is compared to other remedies that have already been uh, had provings uh, within the homeopathic field to see how this particular medicine compares and contrasts with other medicines. Some of the provings that we've done so far have included Oxalis acetacella, Heloderma suspectum, Carnegiea gigantea, Orolophus hilari, uh, Turquoise, Lorea tridentata, Salsolis tragus, Helix tosta, Cerebrum suis. This is a more of a pictorial representation of some of these substances. So tortoise, vulture, turquoise, pig, uh, guia monster, roadrunner, desert locust, tumbleweed, or human chorionic anatotropin. We are looking for research subjects. Um, as I said, we conduct four provings per year. And if you're interested in participating, you can contact us at provings at amcfh.org or call us at 602-347-7950. All of our provings have summaries of our research that are available on our website at www.amcfh.org slash research. We also have more complete descriptions, um, which are called monographs of the research, on each of the provings that are available from our bookstore. And you can reach us there at 602-347-7951 or bookstore at amcfh.org. Some of our research has been compiled also into a single book, in particular a lot of our desert research. Um, and we have a book called The Desert World, a Homeopathic Exploration, which combines information from at least eight or nine of our provings that come from local desert substances, like saguaro cactus. We also typically will submit our research findings to uh, homeopathic computer software um, and the three major ones that carry our research are Whole Health Now, Kent 
you know, associates and Kara, um, which can help homeopathic practitioners identify uh, a particular remedy that we've done improving on for their patients. We also do carry the homeopathic medicines um, that we use in our research, and typically they're available through our medicinary at 602-347-7951 or medicinary at amcofh.org. Um, if you have questions about our, our research or our provings, you can contact us again at www.amcofh.org. Um, our email is info at amcofh.org or research at amcofh.org. Um, our coordinator uh, for our research studies is Dr. Carol Eastman. And as I mentioned earlier, I am the proving director, Dr. Todd Rowe. Um, that concludes what I wanted to say about what is a homeopathic proving. Thank you.